independent contractor. So people such as doctors, dentists, veterinarians, lawyers, accountants, contractors, subcontractors, public uh, stenographers, and actionaries, auctionaries, uh, who are in an independent trade business or profession in which they offer their services to the general public are generally independent contractors. Auctioneers, that's what I was trying to say. That's what I was trying to say. So however, whether they are independent contractors or employees depends on the facts in each case. The general rule is that an individual is an independent contractor if the person paying for the work has the right to control or to direct only the result of the work and not how it will be done. So when we're thinking of the category of independent contractor, we're focused more on these service items, right? Doctors provide services, dentists, veterinarians, lawyers, accountants, contractors, subcontractors. So if you think about something like a lawyer or an accountant, for example, if they're doing work, they are providing their labor. They're, the question could come up then, well, if they're providing labor, are they an employee to the person that they're working for or are they an independent contractor? You could have gray area in many time, in many cases, but the general rules that they lay out and, you, and we might go into some of these more rules in more detail later, but the general idea would be if you're working for someone and they have control over how you're doing the work, the more control they have, the more it looks like an employee employer situation. If on the other hand, they give you a job and a deadline and you do your own work and achieve it on your own time, on your own schedule, using your own resources, you would think you would be more likely to be an independent contractor categorization in that case. Also, remember when we're talking about employees, we could be an independent contractor with employees of ourselves. The question here is whether we are an employee of somebody else being a Schedule C or someone that reports on a Schedule C doesn't mean that you don't have employees. You could, if you need help, then the question is going to be, do you, there's a couple ways you can get help. You can try to get a partner or some kind of equity interest or something like that, which takes up, you know, of resources in terms of them being able to have some say in your business, or you can hire an employee uh, possibly in which case you have more control and they don't have the say of what you're going to do uh, within the business. Uh, and you might be able to take a loan if you need financial, uh, just financial help, uh, right? And that's another uh, resource to it. Or you might be able to hire a contractor yourself, in which case you run into the same problem here with someone that you're hiring, the person that you're hiring. Do they qualify as an employee? or uh, as a contractor. So the earnings of a person who is working as an independent contractor or subject to self-employment tax. So for more information on determining whether you are an employee or independent contractor, you can see publication 15A, Employer's Supplemental Tax Guide. So the IRS tries to make this kind of like a black and white decision as we saw. If you're in a situation that you don't know if you're a contractor or not, then what you want to do is think, would it be beneficial for me to be a contractor or not? What would be the pros and cons of each? And then, and then set up your situation accordingly, making sure that you understand the rules that outline whether or not someone is, a, is an independent contractor or not. Also remembering then when looking at IRS resources, they will tend towards saying it's better to be an employee because that gives them more control. It might be better in your circumstances to be an employee because of benefits and so on and so forth, but it might not as well because independence is nice as well as being able to deduct uh, expenses and whatnot.